I'm Dr. Margaret Lafferty, live from the 2017 Hot Topics in Neonatology Conference here in Washington, D.C. We're joined today by Dr. Karen Popolo from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia to discuss her talk about the revisions to the AAP clinical report on management of neonates with suspected or proven early onset bacterial sepsis. Welcome, Dr. Popolo. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Dr. Popolo, can you tell us about the major objective of your talk? Mm. Well, I'm here representing the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics section on neonatal and perinatal medicine. And the point of my talk is to communicate to clinicians the uh, basis for the upcoming revision of the standing AAP clinical report on early onset sepsis. That's great. Thank you. Can you tell our audience what your major learning points are? Um, one of the major changes in this revision will be a separate consideration of risk among babies born at term and babies born prematurely. So the current clinical report addresses both, and the upcoming revision will be two separate reports based on the idea that the epi epidemiology, the pathogenesis, the risk factors, for early onset sepsis are really very different in the term population and the preterm population. Would you be able to be a little bit more specific about those risk factors in mm -hmm. both populations? Sure. So among term infants, early onset sepsis is generally a complication that develops during labor. So generally it involves a woman and a fetus that are healthy and they come to the moment of labor and delivery and there is some uh, often a sort of ascending colonization of the maternal GU tract, the uterus, and ultimately the fetus with normal bacteria that usually colonize a mother. And that process happens relatively rarely uh, in terms of causing really severe illness in the baby. So about one in 2,000 babies born at term ultimately are diagnosed with early onset sepsis. And you can, because you kind of know how it's happening and when it's happening, you can use some objective data, things like maternal fever or how long uh, the membranes have been ruptured, to make some predictions about who's at higher or lower risk. Among preterm infants, the trouble is, is that the whole reason you're being born preterm is interactive with the risks of infection. So we don't necessarily know why a woman goes into preterm labor or has premature rupture of membranes. We know that in at least a third of the cases, infection is the underlying reason that a baby's born early. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily know when it started, why it started, uh, why the woman's in this position. And so the risk factors are very different depending on um, just how young you're born and the rate of infection is really different. Overall, we think about um, babies born with a birth weight under 1,500 grams, which is considered to be very low birth weight. About you know, roughly one in 90 of those babies is diagnosed with early onset sepsis. And if you start looking at the really, really little babies, babies born at 23, 24 weeks um, with birth weights less than 1,000 grams, uh, you know, sometimes as much as a third to a half of those babies might have an infection. So the, it's just a very different setting, and we thought it would be best to talk about them separately and look at management strategies that are different in each type of baby. That's great. That's very interesting. Thank you so much. I know this revision hasn't yet been published, but um, what would you say, in, in your opinion, is um, the next step, or where do we go from here? Mm. We would really like clinicians to be able to think about the idea of risk assessment, to say, among term babies, this is a rare complication of delivery. So how do we best use the information we have to decide who needs to be evaluated and who needs to get even some empiric antibiotic therapy? Among preterm babies, our field has traditionally given antibiotics to everybody who's born preterm. And sometimes even when we don't have evidence that there's an infection, we continue those antibiotics. And there's increasing evidence that there can be some negative effects of that. So we're hoping that clinicians will develop, um, will look at the recommendations and start thinking about who among the premature babies might not need to start out life on antibiotics. And if nothing else, 
who you can give a pretty brief course of antibiotics if you don't have evidence of infection. That's great. So it's kind of two different ways Absolutely. of thinking about it. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Popolo. Oh, thank you. That's it for us here at the uh, 2017 Hot Topics in Neonatology Conference in Washington, D.C.